If you guys are not familiar with the MCAT, it's a medical admissions test. It's a test that every person who wishes to enter any medical school um, needs to take, at least in the United States and where I'm from. I'm from Puerto Rico. So over here, um, the majority of the medical schools require you to take this exam. So I wanted to give you guys some tips about how I studied for the MCAT. Um, basically, there are two ways that you can go about the MCAT. You can either study by yourself, which is what I did, or you can buy one of those courses that last like a month, maybe a month and a few weeks, I'm really not sure. Basically, you have a person who you go to an institution and you have a person who's kind of like guiding you and giving you lectures and lessons on the things that you need to know. Um, there are two reasons why I did not go down that path and it was because number one, those courses tend to be extremely expensive. I'm talking about um, maybe a thousand, two thousand dollars, a thousand something dollars. They are very ridiculously expensive. And not only that, at least for me, I prefer to self-study. That's just something that I've always preferred. I learned a few things along the way and if you want to self-study for the MCAT, I think that my best advice would be to commit. There's a lot to do and there's a lot of concepts that you need to review and things that you need to make sure you know and understand for the MCAT. So make sure that if you are going to self-study, you have discipline to stick to a certain type of routine. So how did I study? I studied in a three month period of time. Um, first, I bought the books. Um, there are different books that you can purchase. I bought mine off of Amazon and I just got the Kaplan ones. These ones, they come with the seven subject review books. You get biochemistry, biology, behavioral science, critical thinking, um, organic chemistry, physics and math, and general chemistry. All in this packet. This cost me like $150, I would say, $130. It beats the thousand dollars that the courses would have cost me. It's still very expensive. Um, the MCAT is a very expensive test. The books are very expensive. I do recommend getting them. I mean, they gave me guidance and I believe that they helped me out um, when I took the test. So I do recommend getting some sort of review review book. Um, I think Princeton has uh, similar packages to this one, but I really enjoyed this one. Um, and it also came with like an online tools, and the online tools gave you like videos and small quizzes on different subjects, um, and it also comes with three full length practice tests. So. I'm going to guide you through certain things that I did that made my studying process better and more effective. Um, I will say that this is all personal preference and that these are just the things that worked for me and that the things that work for me may not necessarily work for you. Okay, so first I made a schedule. I didn't put any time limits. I, Whenever you research how to study for the MCAT and stuff like that, a lot of um, places where I research would advise me to stick to a certain like time frame to study for certain hours a day That doesn't work for me. So I my daily goal was two chapters um, One from two different books. So what I did is that each day I would take two books for instance um, on Mondays I would pair biology with biochemistry and I would read one chapter from one book and a chapter from the other. And I took two chapters a day and that worked for me because some chapters are going to be easier than others. Some things you're already going to know and it's just a matter of refreshing information. And some other chapters, some other concepts are going to be maybe a little bit difficult for you. For me at least, I never took biochemistry a day in my life. so. This book was a little bit more challenging for me. I really had to learn, you know, and so take into consideration that there may be concepts that you don't fully understand. You may need time to research them online and stuff like that. So 
For that reason, I didn't really commit to a certain amount of hours. I just committed to two chapters per day. I tried, however, to wake up very early in the morning and kind of do everything early in the day. Just so that at night I wouldn't be stressed out and I could just maybe have some time for myself. So, which rarely happened, but so that's what I did. Um, my best advice would be not to focus on memories, memorization, <laughs> on memorizing things. It's very important that you understand the concepts rather than memorizing it, because the MCAT is going to require you to have have real knowledge. It's not as simple as just knowing that the sky is blue. You have to know why the sky is blue and understand why the sky is blue. To give you an example, so. On that note, what I did was that whenever I was reading a chapter, I would highlight the most important things about um, whatever I was reading and I would use a lot of sticky notes to make annotations on the sides. My idea was to highlight the most important things and then condense that information that I highlighted and write it all in the margins of the pages. That worked a lot for me. I wrote things down a lot. <laughs> a lot. After reading each chapter, I would get a pad of loose paper or something like that and then I would summarize everything that I learned without really reading the book, just to kind of know what stuck in my brain. And then I would go back and kind of review those things that didn't really stick and try to really learn it. At the end of these books, you do get a quiz. They are helpful for you to kind of assess what you know and what you don't and kind of like understand what, what are you having trouble with. I also flag things a lot, as you can see. I used, um, I used a lot of stuff. <laughs> I just really like colors and I think that during the test it really helped me a lot because whatever I wrote in certain colors it stuck in my brain and I remembered it and it was it was helpful to me. I used these little guys and I have them in different colors so I would flag with red whenever there was something that I didn't understand and I needed to really go back to. Um, blue was for wherever there were formulas. Green was for some things that I wanted to, I knew, but kind of wanted to review. These guys helped a lot. These guys helped a lot. And these were very, very helpful. Um, I used them mostly for formulas, and I would just write the formula down and kind of write um, what every variable meant. I recommend you study with time. But you know how you work, you know what I mean? Like You know how you work, you know how you can do things and at least for me, I needed time to kind of calmly study and calmly review everything. Uh, that being said, I do recommend you taking at least two weeks before the test to review everything. Kind of like learn the formulas. Remember, all the formulas are not going to be provided. You need to learn them and they are an immense amount. So there are things that you do need to memorize. Now let's get into the exam itself. That exam is 7 hours and 30 minutes, which means that you only get about maybe an hour and a half for each section and there are four sections. And here is why the practice tests are so important. The full length practice tests are going to give you a notion of what you are going to be dealing with on test day. So it's very important to do those tests and do as many as you can. I know that the idea is extremely tedious because 7 hours and 30 minutes in the practice test, ugh, it was horrible. But honestly, if I could go back, I would do more. I think that it's better to do as much as you can. These books came with three, if you can do that and more. Awesome. As you go, you're going to get better at reading the paragraph, answering the questions quickly. These practice tests that I was able to take gave me an option if I wanted to do the standard MCAT testing, which means they would only give me an hour and 30 minutes for each section, or if I wanted to add more time to my sections. I recommend you do the standard, the standard one, you get the standard option, so you can get a feel of 
how fast you are at reading and answering the question. And time flies. You guys are 59 questions for each section. That is a lot of questions that you have to think and go back and pull information that you've learned. Oh, and do a practice test before you start studying and one after you start studying so you kind of compare where you're at. Um, so yeah, you guys, another thing that helped me a lot were Khan Academy videos. They are amazing and they're pretty short and pff, I love them. If you are visual, maybe use those tools. Um, they're gonna help you out a lot. So yeah, oh, and use a lot of colors. That really helps. If you're going to take this um, exam, good luck. If you have any questions or anything that I could possibly help you with, leave them down below or message me or something. I would really like to help. Um, I think that I've learned quite a few things along my journey and uh, I don't know, I would love to help anybody out. I mean, I know that I was kind of just living life and not knowing what the heck I was doing. It would have been nice for me to have someone that I could like maybe ask and be like, how do I do this? So if I can do that for anybody, I would love to. So yeah, good luck to all you future doctors. I hope you have a wonderful semester and a wonderful rest of the week. And yeah, good luck on your MCATs, kids. And if you've already taken them and you're waiting on the results like I am, I feel you, I feel you. <laughs> So yeah, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy these type of advisory videos. And like I said, leave a comment down below if you have anything at all to say. I will see you guys next time. Bye.